So last week, our beautiful 400 gallon bow front tank during the heat wave broke out an ick. I've always been a big fan of copper medications in non-invertebrate systems with one little trick, and that is you don't add the medication all at one time. In fact, you take the dosage and cut it in half. That way, the amount of medication that you're adding isn't so strong and potent at the very beginning. It slowly works up on the fish and they're able to adjust to it a lot better. Unfortunately, in this particular tank, there's a pretty virile case of ick in there and it's just, it's spread to all the fish. Uh, I didn't sleep well last night. Uh, I've added medication, again, in half dose increments for probably the last week and a half. I've gotten up to what I thought was a therapeutic level but apparently not yet. So I'm out this morning, it's Sunday morning, to check up on the tank. I'm also prepared to start dropping the salinity in the tank to see if I can fight the parasites that way. So let's go check it out. French angel. She's looking okay. Tangs. There's chocolate tang that didn't make it. Oh my. Look how bad he is. Look how bad he is. Oh. Dealing with parasites in the aquarium can be quite frustrating. Firstly, these are your little wet pets, and it's difficult to see them in such a bad way. Second, most of us have no real idea as to what or how to use medications. The assumption is that a few drops of medication will magically make the problem go away. And it's just not that easy. Your first challenge is confirming what it is that's affecting the fish. The second is determining which product and knowing how to dispense it. And the third is knowing how to prepare for its use. Now the tank has a UV sterilizer. It's a 24 or 25 watt unit, which is currently turned off because the medication requires it. But um, I'm not real confident in that UV's ability to do really much of anything. Uh, it's kind of like the bug zapper on your patio. It's only as effective as what uh, passes through it. And that has to bring everything from the tank inside of it. Um, Wet dry trickle filter is working well, protein skimmer is working well. Uh, all the algae in my algae scrubber has been killed off by the uh, medication, so that's not offering any help now. So the only thing that we can do is start dropping the salinity. Here's as though all my butterflies, because there was some uh, double saddle butterflies in here as well that are having some troubles, and I don't see them either. The tangs, except for the chocolate, uh, seem to be doing okay, and we're down to three uh, of the five clownfish. So the only thing we have left to do is to combat this with what's called hyposalinity, which is dropping the salinity or the salt level in the tank. The idea, just like the medication, being that at some point everything is affected the smaller organisms are affected first, such as the parasites. While I drain out some of the salt water to make room for the new fresh water, let me back up a couple of steps. I determined the fish had parasites when I arrived last week for aquarium service. Clearly, it appeared to be some form of parasite as the fish were fully enveloped in small white spots. I needed to respond immediately, and the medication of choice for parasites is a copper-based medication. I began dispensing this medication at half the recommended amount, knowing that it would take me twice as long to reach 
a therapeutic level. My reasoning is that many of the fish do not respond well to sudden high levels of copper. Raising it slowly, as in half doses, is easier for the fish to tolerate. But once again, it takes twice as long to reach a therapeutic level. And I already found myself behind due to no warning that the fish had parasites. Having dispensed my half increment doses for the last four days in a row, I can see that I've still not reached an effective level and I'm now getting nervous about continuing to add more copper medication. So as an alternative, I've now started to drop the salt level in the aquarium. The intent of the lower salinity is similar to that of the copper medication, and that is to reach a level where the smaller parasites are affected before the larger organisms are. So we just finished taking 30 gallons of salt water out. We're ready to put 30 gallons of fresh water, or in this case, reverse osmosis water back into the tank. I think one of the things I'm gonna do though is try to catch that golden butterfly and put some fresh water in the bucket and give her a fresh water bath to try to knock some of those parasites off her. So as I mentioned, we're gonna try to do a fresh water bath on that golden butterfly. I just went down and got myself a net out of the van. We're gonna try to catch her and give her a dip in some fresh water, see if we can relieve some of that uh, stress and such from the fish. I really do feel bad for this golden butterfly. She was the odd man in the fancy cylinder tank and spent many months being chased around and hiding inside that coral sculpture. She was gifted to this tank and up until now she's done remarkably well and was a very happy and attractive fish. Freshwater baths are always stressful to the fish, um, temperature-wise, pH-wise, so there could be some issues there that kind of cause them to kind of really stress out, but um, at this point I think it was only advantageous to at least attempt it. I'm Jim Stein, and this is LA Fish Guys Catch of the Day. Sponsored by Jelly Aquarium. When dispensing flake food, make sure to push it under the surface of the water so it doesn't float across the surface and head straight for the internal overflow. This has been the LA Fish Guys Catch of the Day. If you're looking for more than a desktop jellyfish bowl, visit jellyquarium360.com. Hi, my name's Dean from Tropical Imports here in Glendale, California. We have all different types of tropical fish, freshwater and saltwater. We have reptiles, freshwater plants, goldfish, saltwater invertebrates. We've got all different types of little aquariums here for betas, for tropical fish, mini nano reef for plants, saltwater fish. I've got all different types of bowls. Whatever you like, we've got it. Having placed the golden butterfly into fresh water to try to relieve her of some of the parasites, I fear that she's already too far gone and just too weak and simply may not survive my radical freshwater bath attempt. It's really too bad as it seems I'm one step behind in all of my attempts to resolve the parasite problem in the tank. So now it's time to start putting that fresh water into the tank. And while my fresh water bath seems to have had little effect to the butterfly, at the very least, the benefit of dropping the salinity in the aquarium is it will decrease some of the stress to the fish. 
One of the things the parasites do is draw out moisture from the host. In addition to the saltwater environment dehydrating the fish, so are the parasites. By dropping the salinity, it helps decrease the hydration demand on the fish and that relieves some of the stress. So that's 30 gallons of purified fresh water going into the tank, dropping the salinity from about 1020, and I'm guessing it'll bring it down to 1018, 1017. We're probably gonna do another 30 gallon freshwater change tomorrow. For now, let's turn the pump back on and see how our fish are doing. With the main water pump plugged back in and the filter system running again and taking a second look just to make sure that everything's operating as it's supposed to. As the real question I'm beginning to ask at this point is what caused the outbreak of parasites? Glancing through the tank, it's becoming obvious as to the scale of fish that are very parasitized and those that did not make it. I started a few days behind this outbreak and my slower yet more tolerant application of the copper medication has not yet proven effective. But then maybe it's too much for some of the more sensitive fish, such as the butterfly fish. So we've added our 30 gallons of fresh water back into the tank. We've removed the fish that didn't make it. Now the question is, do we want to replenish the amount of medication based on the 30 gallons of water I took out? It's a bit of a gamble, meaning I gotta roll the dice thinking that is the medication too strong, uh, or is it a case where I haven't risen the level up to a therapeutic level to benefit the fish yet? I think I'm just gonna add uh, that 30 gallons worth of copper to the tank. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I've always been successful using copper medication in fish-only systems. Usually, it only takes four to five half doses to visually see when I've reached a therapeutic level. This tank, this time, it's not as obvious. And I'm now questioning what is considered too much. So I've gone ahead and done the 30 gallon water change and I replenish that water with um, reverse osmosis. Um, I pulled out some of the fish and some of them probably aren't gonna make it. This one potentially could. Um, he's been a trooper through a lot of other situations so I'm hopeful for him. Uh, I did put some food into the tank and as you can see, some of the fish are actually out eating. Um, so that's kind of a good sign because when they stop eating, that's when it becomes a problem. So I'm going to be here again tomorrow to do another 30 gallon uh, water change with um, fresh water just to try to um, get this under control. Come on back for part two. See how we've done. Until then, keep moving forward because there's no other way to go.